Hey guys, welcome to another Final Cut Pro video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Motion VFX's M Tracker 3D plugin and my first impressions after using it for the last couple of weeks. I'll show you a bunch of different examples of what you can do using the M Tracker 3D plugin, and I'll walk you through how I created each one of these shots. There are so many creative things you can do with the M-Tracker 3D plugin and it's impossible to cover all of its features and everything that it's capable of in just one video. Today we're going to look at the following examples. 2D text tracking, 3D text tracking, adding and tracking multiple location pins, tracking photos in 3D space and even tracking emojis or 3D models to your footage. I want to say a big thank you to Motion VFX for sponsoring this video. They generously gave me the M-Tracker 3D Essential Bundle a few weeks ago so that I could review it and show you guys how it works. I wanted to see how well the tracker works on various different clips, so I tested it using drone footage, Sony a7 III footage, GoPro footage, and a stock clip, and I'm really impressed with how well it tracks. With that said, let's get into the first example. For the 2D text tracking example, I have this drone shot here from Lake Bled in Slovenia, and the first thing I'm going to do is drag and drop the M Tracker 3D plugin from the effects window onto the clip. You can either track the footage directly in the viewer over here or by clicking the track button in the plugin. So I'll go ahead and click track. The time it takes to track will depend on the resolution, the duration, and how difficult it is to track your shot. So it'll probably take a few minutes. I've sped this process up, but once it's done, you'll need to drop one of the presets on top of your footage. If you look at the M Tracker 3D category in your title browser, You'll see you have a bunch of different options here like captions, drop zones, particles, pointers, 3D models and all sorts of stuff. I'll head back up here and I like this title 2D number 5, so I'll drag and drop that on top of my clip. Now I don't want it to start at the very beginning of the shot because I want the shot to play a little bit before it animates in. I'll start the title about here and I'll just trim it to the end. I'll go over to the title properties here and I'll turn the animation out off. So we'll have it animate in, but it'll stay on screen until the end of the shot. Before we copy the tracking data for this text, I'll just change this to leg lead and I'll change this bottom layer here to Slovenia. Now what we need to do is to copy the track from this M Tracker 3D plugin over here. Click copy track, head back over to the title and then I'll paste that track onto this title. Hit OK and you'll see that this text is tracked to this point over here. You can click on this icon over here to change the position. You can see how when I do that the axes change, the X, Y and Z axes move around. I can hold down Shift to keep the orientation the same. And I'm going to track somewhere in the middle of this island here. Let's maybe pick a point like this door. I'm going to click on this Show Hints box here just to hide that text and this gradient. And let's just scrub through here to see how it's tracking. That looks like it's tracking pretty well. The next step would be to change the scale and the position. So let's scale that up and let's position it somewhere in the sky over here. Let's scrub through again, just make sure that the track still looks good. Yeah, it looks like it's tracking nicely in 3D space there. So now let's go change some of the properties of this title. So I want to change the title color. I'll color pick from the roof over here, this orange color. I'll do the same with Slovenia, but I'll pick that from here so it's the same. Then there's a bunch of different settings you can change here, like the light color, ambient light color, you can turn shadows on or off, you can wrap the light, you can add a reflection, all sorts of things. So what I like to do is I like to add a bit of noise just so that it blends into your footage a little bit more. This is a bit too much, I'll go 0.1 and I'll add a slight blur. Just because titles are really sharp, obviously they're digitally created, so by blurring it and adding a bit of noise, you just make those titles blend into your scene a little bit better. Now if I play that back, this is what the final product looks like. For the 3D text tracking example, I want to use this stock clip from Croatia and I want it to look like the camera is moving underneath the title, hovering in 3D space. So first, let's add the M Tracker 3D plugin to the clip and hit track. When the track is done, you can copy the track and then drag a 3D title of your choice down on top of your footage. I'll use Alt Square Bracket to trim the end there. I'll also uncheck the animation out box so that it stays on screen right till the end. 
Next, I'll paste the track onto this title layer and hit OK. I'll click on the positioning icon here and I want to find a point of contrast, maybe this section of the door somewhere here. I'll hold down Shift so that the orientation doesn't change and I'll click over there. Let's scrub through to check the track. Looks like it does a pretty good job of keeping that track. So I'll come in here and change my text to Croatia and I'll scale it up and I'll position it over here in the sky or at least in the air, hovering above the walkway here. Next, I'll come down and change my color. I'll color pick something again from the scene, maybe this dark brown or light brown, maybe something like that. And I'll go ahead and I'll add some noise again, like I did with the last shot. And I'll blur it slightly. You can probably go with a little bit less noise in this case, something about there. Now, if you want to grade the shot, including the title, you can select the title and the clip and hit Alt-G to create a compound clip. And then you can simply color correct your clip or apply a light to create the look you want. And if I play that back, this is what it looks like. For this next example, I want to track and add a few different location pins on this drone shot of Prague. There were two issues I experienced when tracking the shot, but they were easy fixes. The first one was that because the drone stayed in one position and just panned from side to side, MTracker 3D gave me an error when trying to track the shot. All I had to do was switch the movement type from free to tripod since there was no actual camera movement and the camera just stayed in one position. The second issue was that MTracker 3D struggled to achieve a proper track because this shot doesn't have a lot of contrast. MTracker 3D uses areas of high contrast in your shot to track the movement, so a low contrast scene like this made it pretty challenging. There is an easy workaround for that though. All you need to do is create contrast using your color wheels. So I'll come in here and I'll crush the shadows, I'll really drop it down, and then I'll boost the highlights here as well just to create that contrast in the scene. Now it doesn't look great, but we're not going to leave the footage like this. This is just for the track. So I'll head back over to my inspector and I'll drag this color wheels adjustment before the MTracker 3D plugin. With the MTracker 3D plugin selected, I'll hit track and I'll let it do its thing. Now that the tracking is done, I can hide this color wheels adjustment and I'll copy the track. I'll drag and drop a pointer here and I'll change the duration to somewhere around there. It's roughly four seconds. And then I'll go ahead and I'll paste that track. The first thing I'll do is click on the position icon over here and I'll position this track somewhere over here, roughly above this tower here, which is the powder tower. I'll come into my text and I'll change that to powder tower. And I'll adjust the rotation here slightly. I'll come in here and change the color to a bright red something like that, and I'll change my text to that same red color. Let's check that track just by scrubbing through. Looks like the track has done a pretty good job there. I'll do my usual thing with the noise and blur, so I'll add a blur, I'll add some noise, and I'll set that to 0.1. In this case, I wouldn't necessarily worry about a shadow too much on the buildings there, so I'm going to turn the shadow off. We'll deal with the shadows in a bit when I put a pointer here in the river. Okay, so now I'm going to copy this title layer by holding down Alt, clicking and dragging, and I'll put it roughly over here. I'll now need to repaste the track on this title because I've moved it from its original position over here to later on in the shot. So I'll just select the title and hit Paste Track because we've already copied it from before, and I'll hit OK. For this one, I want to position it over here above this tower. So I'll do that. I'll adjust the rotation slightly and I'll change the title here to Church of Our Lady Tun. Let's check the track. Looks good. I'll do another copy of this pointer and I'll put that roughly over here. Then I'll paste the track yet again and I'll position this one roughly over here where this church is. Change the rotation and I'll change this text to St. Nicholas's Church. Then I'll make one more copy and I'll paste that roughly over here. And for this one, oh, let me paste the track again. And this one I'll position here in the river. Somewhere about there. 
I'll adjust the rotation again and I'll change the text here to Voltava River. So now this one, because of the angle of the sun, there would be a shadow here. I'm not too worried about it in the buildings because it'll be difficult to determine where the shadow actually is here. But here, it would be very obvious if, if it was missing. So I'm going to come down to the shadows and I'll turn that on. And then here I can adjust the light rotation, which would be something like that. I can also change the light angle to make it a longer or shorter shadow. The sun's fairly low down, so it has got quite an angle to it. So probably something like that would look more realistic. This title's gotten a lot darker because the sun or the light source is now technically behind it. So I'll come in here just to this pointer color and I'll try lighten that up a little bit just so it doesn't look too dark and I'll color pick that same color from the pointer for the text. If I play that back, this is what the shot looks like. For this example, I'm going to track and add images to this GoPro clip. I've already tracked the shot to save some time, so I'll copy the track and then I'll drag this drop zone picture in and I'll retime that to the end of the clip and I will paste the track. I'll hit OK, select the positioning tool and I'll track a point somewhere here on this building. I'll hold down Shift so that the orientation doesn't change and I'll put it over there. I'll scale this down let's say about 50% and I'll position it slightly just so that it's a little bit higher and a little bit to the side. Let's just scrub through there to check the track. That looks pretty good to me. So now we need to drop an image into this drop zone. So what I'm going to do is just grab one of the images I've brought here already, select the drop zone and select that photo. I'll apply that clip. And then I can just change the scale to get the image to fit a little bit better in the frame. Something about there. I'll duplicate this layer by holding down Alt and I'll retime it to fit. The first thing I need to do is paste the track again. So I'll copy the track and paste it onto the second title. Next, I'll position this on the right hand side. I'll hold down Shift again so that the orientation doesn't change. And then I'll adjust the position here of this photo and I'll turn the shadow off as well. I'll turn the shadow off on this first layer too. And for the second photo, I'll just replace that image with another one that I already have on my timeline. And I'll click Apply Clip. And let's scrub through here just to check that track. Looks like it's tracking quite nicely. So let me play that back so you can see it in real time. For this last example, I have this Sony a7 III shot from Venice and I want to do something fun and a bit crazy. Let's add a wow emoji here. Wow! I've already tracked the shot to save some time, so I'll copy this track and I'll head over to the mTracker expansion section where I have captions and all sorts of other things and I'll grab this wow emoji and drop that on top of my footage. Next, I'll paste this track information. I'll hit OK and I'll hide these hints. Let's use the anchor point tool here to find a point where we can track. I'd say somewhere along one of these buildings is good. And let's just scrub through here to check to see if we're getting a good track. Looks like it's tracking well to me, so I'll just increase the scale here. I'm gonna put him in the sky and I'll move him into the sky up here. Can make him a little bigger. And since it's a 3D model, I can adjust this rotation here, get him to face the gondola a little bit and have him kind of looking down on the gondola like that. I'll take the shadows off. I'll add a little bit of noise, very little bit, and I will add a bit of a Gaussian blur as well. Let's just double check the track by scrubbing through. That looks pretty good to me. Now I want to grade this whole clip, but the emoji is a lot more saturated than the rest of the clip. So with the emoji title selected, I'll come over to my color inspector and I'll just reduce the saturation so it sort of matches the scene here. Then I'll group these two clips together into a compound clip by hitting Alt G. And I'll drop a light on here just to make it easy. We'll just grab this one. 
Now it still looks a little saturated, so I'll come in here and I'll just drop that saturation even more. Something like that looks good. And this is the final shot. Wow. So that's an introductory look at Motion VFX's M Tracker 3D plugin. I've only been using it for a few weeks now and I've really enjoyed playing around with it. I think that the more I use it, the more I'll find creative and different ways to incorporate it into my edits. So I'll probably make an updated video sometime in the future. If you have any questions about M Tracker 3D, please comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. My initial impression is that it's a really impressive and powerful plugin. You can do so much with it and I can't wait to use it more often. If you look at Motion VFX's trailer video that they posted when they launched the plugin, you can see that there are endless possibilities. If you've made it this far, you're probably wondering about the cost. Well, the M Tracker 3D Essential Bundle goes for $299, which includes the M Tracker 3D plugin itself and the three expansion packs, the titles, captions, and pointers packs. You can also just get the M Tracker 3D plugin on its own for $249, and the expansion packs can be bought separately for $69 each which makes the Essential Bundle a really good deal. Oh, and the Emoji Pack is free, so if you just purchase the M-Tracker 3D plugin on its own, you can always add the emojis for free. If you found this walkthrough and tutorial of M-Tracker 3D helpful and you want to purchase the plugin, please consider using the link down below. I do get a commission if you decide to make a purchase, which will really help the channel out and it will help me to keep making more videos like this for you guys. That's it for this one, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you in the next one.